Hey everyone, uh, I'm going to do a quick little talk about Adaptive Sweep. Now, Adaptive Sweep is an extremely powerful tool. Uh, truthfully, one of the most powerful sweep tools you can use. It's pretty incredible what you can do. It's, it's a huge subject and I'm just going to touch about, uh, upon it just to give you an idea of what it can do. I had someone ask me about it. So what I've done is I just set up a surface. I threw a curve up on that surface, just 3D curve, projected it out, put a sketch on that, and uh, basically I have everything that I need. I have a guide, I have my initial profile, and a surface with which to sweep along. So here I'm going to go into Adaptive Sweep, and you'll notice it asks for a guide curve. So as soon as I pick my guide curve, everything propagates that it possibly can. I have my guiding curve, which is the project, I have my spine, which is the project, and a reference surface. It knows this because this is projected onto that surface, so it assumes that I'm going to use that surface. Next thing I need is the sketch. So I'm going to pick this sketch that I have set up right in the middle. As soon as I pick that, you'll notice that I have all of the parameters of said sketch up here. If I just simply select OK, there is my sweep. Actually, let me uh, change the color of the surface so we can uh, better see things. So there is my adaptive sweep. Big deal, we've seen and done a similar type sweep. The real power of the adaptive sweep is, I'm gonna double click on this. Now you'll notice that I have sections. It's not allowing me to go pick another section per se. What it is allowing me is to pick a point on that guide. Now you can pick a vertex, but I want control of this location. So by selecting this point, now what it's done is at that location it sets up all of the original parameters from the first sketch. So that first sketch that you selected for your initial uh, profile, it's important to make sure you parameterize it in a way in which that you want to be able to morph or modify the next section. So this next section has those parameters. So if I come in here and I'm going to double click on one of these parameters, <clears throat> excuse me, here's my constraint definition. I'm going to make this 55 and I'm going to double click on this 15. I'm going to make this 10 and then I'm going to take this 75. I'm going to make it 65 and I'm going to select OK. What happens now, as you can see, is, is that from section to section, I have my sweep that appears. At this point here are all of the parameters that I entered in. You'll notice that there's my six, uh, point 0.6 indicating that that is the location of which that I have specified. The default is obviously the first point. Um, if I change that, it'll move the sketch, which will adjust everything else. Um, but as you can see, if I double click on this, I have all of those parameters still available to me at that specific location. It's as if you're, uh, it's allowing you to set up multiple sketches along that guide without having to actually do all of the multiple sketches. So if I come in here now and want to add another point, I'm just going to come in and select that point. And you'll notice it does the same thing. It bases the next section off of the original section, not the last one that you modified. So here I can, once again, make whatever modifications I deem necessary. Uh, let's see, that's 30, I'll go up 15, and I'm gonna select OK, and as you can see, it morphs it. The really powerful, <clears throat> excuse me, the really powerful thing about this tool is, is that it always maintains the relationship of this, of these sections to this surface. So that's why it's important to have the surface. So if you're doing something, let's say, around a windshield or around a door opening, and that section is gonna change, as it goes from one segment to the next segment, then you would pick the normal surface to remain uh, uh, tied to. Right? So this is maintaining that uh, surface. You can see it gives you a nice transition, cubic transition across from section to section. If I modify this point, you'll see that it's modified. And you'll also notice that it stays radial or perpendicular to that guide curve. So uh, the in inputs are very important. You get those nailed down. And another nice thing about this tool is, as you can see, 
is that uh, the entire uh, section itself at this back end doesn't necessarily have to stay on the surface. It does down here because it needs to know where to start its uh, 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 normal condition to the surface or radial condition to the surface. But uh, other than that, it can it can kind of it can drop off a little bit. Uh, select OK. I can double click on this. <clears throat> Excuse me. And if I want to, you'll notice that I can right mouse click. I can say add after, remove section. That's what these three buttons are for. I can remove a section. I can rename a section. So here's my user section number two. You'll see right over there. I can hit this and rename it if I want it. And, and so on and I, again multiple I can go through and, and uh, if I have uh, sections at specific locations I can label those sections uh, very very powerful um, I can come in here and if I drag this you'll notice that let me zoom up on it the section does stay tied to the profile and it remains uh, perpendicular if I preview that hit OK, you'll notice it bounces back. And the reason why it bounces back is because it's tied to a point. So the re really the best way, again, as you saw me modify earlier, is to make a change to the point location. So in this case, I want to take this and say, uh, maybe I want this at 100. Boom. Makes the change. So that's your adaptive sweep. If I wanted to add another point, I can come over here, select this location, and then there's my new location. Very powerful. I said it'll do just about anything you want it to do and you only need one sketch and again this primary sketch it's critical that you constrain it in such a way that it's uh, high, basically based how you want to morph this thing how it's going to change as it travels along your guide so you saw me I just picked the vertex you can pick a vertex parents we don't want to really get into this too much right now um, we got parameters this is just for each section so if you want to you can see here those names are important so you can just toggle through these and then get all the parameters for those sections you see it lists everything in there um, you also have uh, uh, relimitation this is just pretty standard operating fare from uh, other operators so relimit on the start and end sections basically it's saying cut it off over here if I turn that stuff off in preview go OK, you'll notice it just extends it out to the actual full length of the curve. That's all that relimitation is. So if you want to relimit it back to the start section, you'll notice it relimits it back to the start section. So uh, that's that's all that is. Incredibly powerful tool, very useful. Uh, it's, uh, it's something that I have used rarely on occasion. If I have a, a specific profile shape that I need to sweep along a guide, as you see here, and it needs to change uh, in proportion uh, accurately. Um, there's certain requirements for a certain amount of flow that has to go across an area or air uh, uh, um, needs to flow. And it there's you know, like along a foil uh, a foil edge or a spoiler edge, and it needs to maintain a shape and just get bigger or smaller. This is a great way to go about doing that. Anyway, hope you liked it. Hope it made some sense. Uh, please like and subscribe and uh, share with your friends. And if you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. Thanks again.